If you have peripheral neuropathy or any type of nerve damage, you've probably heard nerves heal extremely slow. The reality is nerves are the slowest healing tissue in the body and will only heal at a rate of one inch per month. Now, let me put this in perspective for you. The nervous system is so vast and complex that if you were to take all the nerves from a single person and join them end to end, it would stretch around the world two and a half times. Pretty amazing, huh? Well, maybe not so amazing when you're trying to heal all those damaged nerves. But what if I were to tell you there's a proven technology that can speed up nerve recovery by four times. So instead of healing at one inch per month, your nerves could actually recover at a rate of four inches per month. Now that's a game changer and it exists. It's called photobiomodulation. Now in today's video, I'll be talking about what is photobiomodulation? How does it work? And how effective is this amazing therapy? It's going to be good. Stay tuned for more. Hello, Health Explorer. This is Dr. Coppola, the Nerve Doctor. If you've been told your neuropathy is permanent, I'm here to help you break through new levels of health you've never dreamed possible. If you're new to my channel, click on the subscribe button for up-to-date and accurate information on peripheral neuropathy and what you can do to overcome it. Also, don't forget to click on the bell so that you get notified when I publish new content. So today I'll be talking about a specific therapy that's been successfully used in parts of Europe for over 30 years to heal damaged peripheral nerves, and it's called photobiomodulation. Now there's three parts to today's video. In the first part, I'll cover what is photobiomodulation and how new is this technology. Then in part two, I'll talk about how does it work and the effects that can be achieved on peripheral neuropathy nerves. And make sure you stick around to, for part three because I'll review the effectiveness of this therapy. So let's dive in. Part one, what the heck is photobiomodulation? If we break down the word, photo means light, bio means body, and modulation means to improve the function of the cells. In other words, it's the ability to exert a healing or regenerative influence on the body by using light therapy to improve wound and tissue healing, reduce inflammation, and provide pain relief. Now, photomodulation is a form of light therapy which uses photons of light to stimulate the mitochondria. This leads to a cascade of events which increase cellular metabolism, which is the cell's ability to make new, healthier molecules, and it can also decrease pain and accelerate the healing process. Now, this technology isn't new. In fact, the first laser medical procedure was done in 1961. So it's been around for over 61 years and it's been FDA approved. Today, it goes by many different names and you may have heard it referred to as low-level laser therapy or low-level light therapy, infrared light therapy, near-infrared light, cold laser, or photobiomodulation. In 2015, the term photobiomodulation, or PBM for short, was added to the National Library of Medicine database as the most accurate term for this therapeutic application of light. So when we use the term PBM therapy, it indicates a form of light therapy that may include either the visible spectrum of light, which is 400 to 700 nanometers, or the near-infrared spectrum, which is 700 to 1100 nanometers, which is invisible to the human eye. Instead of using the term uh, photobiomodulation, you'll hear me refer to it as red light or infrared light because these are the most common terms you'll see on, on the market. It's important not to confuse this procedure with a high power surgical laser. Here's the difference. Surgical lasers generate a tremendous amount of heat in order to induce blood coagulation and to cut, remove, or resurface tissue. In contrast, infrared light therapy is a non-thermal process that generates extremely li little heat and promotes tissue repair. 
Okay, on to part two. How does it work? Light therapy uses light photons that come from either the red or the infrared spectrum of light. Red light is the visible spectrum that we can see with our eyes, whereas infrared light is the invisible spectrum of light. This spectrum can't be seen with the naked eye. As a matter of fact, in order to see the infrared light, you'd have to seal yourself in a blacked out room to observe the glowing red lights. Now, this can get rather technical and complicated, and as much as I love this stuff, I don't want to bore you. I'm going to describe how this works in layman terms. On a cellular level, here's what happens. The red or infrared light penetrates the mitochondria of the cell. The mitochondria is known as the powerhouse of the cell because it's the cell's energy factory that makes ATP. ATP is the fuel that powers the functions of the cells, including nerve cells. However, when nerve tissue is damaged, the production of ATP in the cells is impaired, which decreases the nerve's ability to regenerate. The more ATP your mitochondria produce, the more rapidly nerve cells will begin to heal and regenerate. Think of it this way. When infrared light hits our nerve cells, they begin to produce more ATP or energy to recharge the nerve cells. Much like recharging a battery pack, when the nerve has a fully charged battery, so to speak, it can begin to heal itself very rapidly. High energy equals fast repair. Low energy equals slow or no repair. The energy or ATP is the catalyst to jumpstart or resuscitate the nerves. Another important point is when the light hits the cells, it begins to stimulate the release of nitric oxide or NO into the bloodstream. And NO is important for many aspects of your health, but its most vital function is vasodilation. This means it can actually relax the inner muscles of the blood vessels, causing them to widen and increase circulation. So why do we even care about circulation when we're talking about trying to repair damaged nerves? Well, this is a question that patients often ask me. They'll say, hey doc, my circulation is perfectly fine, so it's not a problem. Well, the reality is most people have impaired circulation and aren't even aware of it. If you think because you don't have varicose veins or your hands and feet aren't cold that your circulation is perfectly normal, well, think again. By the time these symptoms surface, your circulation is, is already significantly impaired. So you, can, you can't rely on these signs alone. But let's say for the sake of argument that you actually have good circulation. Well, injured nerves rely upon not only healthy blood flow, but an increased blood flow to the damaged site to deliver oxygen and the necessary nutrients that will aid the repair and regeneration of that particular nerve. Nitric oxide will allow this to happen. I released a video called The Miracle Molecule that explains everything about mitochondrial health, the role of nitric oxide in nerve health, and how to increase your NO levels. So if you want to learn more about that, I'll leave a description in the link below. Okay, on to part three. How effective is infrared light therapy? In 2019, there were over 600 papers written on infrared therapy and over 700 randomized clinically controlled trial studies with at least 150 of those being done on humans. So this treatment has been well-researched and proven effective. In fact, it's being used for more than just peripheral neuropathy damage. It's been effective with Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, concussion, traumatic brain injury, stroke, depression, even movement disorders, and multiple sclerosis. As I mentioned earlier, infrared therapy has been successfully used for over 30 years in parts of Europe for peripheral neuropathy and has been well researched here in the US by Harvard Medical School and Massachusetts General Hospital. I'll leave a link to two different YouTube videos with Dr. Michael Hamblin, a professor at Harvard and principal research of the Wellman Center of Photomedicine at Massachusetts General Hospital. Dr. Hamblin has published 300 papers on infrared therapy use on the body and is the leading expert in the field. Studies investigating the effects of infrared therapy on injured peripheral nerves reported immediate protective effects and increased functional activity on the nerve. Furthermore, it showed a decrease in prevention of scar tissue formation at the injured site. And what's even more incredible is that the infrared therapy prevented or decreased degeneration in motor peripheral nerves at the spinal cord and significantly increase regeneration. 
Now, the great news is that infrared therapy has been studied and refined to the point that precision of the wavelength, its depth of delivery, the size of the cross-sectional area affected by the beam, the power of the beam, and the exposure time, whether it's either pulsed or continuous, has been accurately determined to ensure nerve regeneration. Now, from a personal clinical perspective, I've treated over 13,000 patients over 18 years, and infrared therapy was an absolute game changer for our patients. When we first began treating peripheral neuropathy patients, we didn't use infrared therapy, and we only had about a 60% success rate, which is pretty damn good, considering that the average doc is telling people that their nerves, you know, once they're da damaged, it's permanent, and you just need to learn to live with it. But Dr. Matera and I are overachievers, and 60% wasn't good enough. So we kept researching, and that's when we discovered infrared therapy for damaged nerves. Once we brought this technology into our clinic, well, our patient satisfaction soared up to 90%. Now that's a number we could live with and feel good about. But before you rush out to buy an infrared laser device, you'll want to watch my next video, Five Things You Need to Know Before Buying an Infrared Laser Device. I can't tell you how many times the patient told me they tried infrared therapy and it didn't help. And when I looked at what they were using, it was no wonder it didn't work. The unit was complete junk. And I don't want you to fall into that trap. As always, thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed this information and you want more like it, please be sure to subscribe to our channel. While you're there, please like us because it really helps us grow our channel. And don't forget to click the bell so you can be notified when we publish new content. One last thing, your input is always important to us. What do you want to hear about next? Tell us so we can cover it in a future video. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in my next video. Whereas infrared is the invisible spectrum of light, this specific... <laughs> can I pick up where this spectrum? No? Okay, we'll do it again.